all kinds of fun things. We had such an exciting week last week. I almost want to go back and just kind of relive it a little bit and show you and share with you guys. We had seven companies in six days sign up with Square Coil. We had more than one a day. So we just brought on 300, maybe 350 users onto the software. So great times, great exciting times. We can't believe how many people signed up in the last week, week and a half. Uh, we even had one of our competitors go under. So obviously we're doing something right. Uh, they finally rolled up their doors and said, nope, we can't compete anymore. So uh, all happy times on our side. And then to further that, um, looks like the building's gonna go through. All contingencies have been waived. I got my uh, new LLC here, the next rung properties. That's the LLC that we put the building into. So it looks like Square Coil is going to have a new headquarters here in about five months. So just super pumped, super exciting times. Actually, this afternoon, I get to go down and look at um, all the interiors, all the uh, layouts for it. I'm uh, working with uh, David over there at Think Office Interiors. He's down here in San Diego. He'll be designing the whole interior, the whole layout, all of that. So uh, just a lot of fun stuff. We get to play all the toys. All the stressfulness is kind of gone. The, you know, if we're going to get the building, we're not going to accept it. You know, all the stress that comes with buying a building, that's pretty much gone. So now it's uh, fun times. But uh, I cruise through social media and then about what was it it was sunday so 48 hours ago two days ago i watched this clip and i'm going to tell you exactly what this clip says and then i want to talk about it this uh this person that was talking on social media says there was a professor in pennsylvania and it was a, a, a clay pottery company and they said or clay pottery and it was a, and they said okay we're going to divide the team this classroom of 50 students into 25 and 25. This 25, you're gonna work on making one clay pot, one perfect clay pot. And this team over here, I want you guys to make as many clay pots as you can with the 50 pounds of clay. And whoever, you know, does the best marks. How many quantities can you make and how can you make the perfect clay pot? And so he launched them and both teams went to work. At the very end, he says, okay, really the goal was who made the most perfect clay pot? And it turns out the team that was trying to make the perfect clay pot did not succeed. They didn't win, they didn't even come close. Pot number 35 or 36 over here was the best perfect clay pot. And he goes, so the interesting dynamic that happened was through repetition, they were able to perfect what they were doing. As were these just kept going to work on one, just working on one, just working on one. And I looked at that and it hit me really good and I've been thinking about it nonstop. It's kind of been on the back of my mind for the last two days. What ways do we as humans or as managers or owners or whatever role you're playing, what do we do where we just go, I just need to perfect that one clay pot. I just need to do this one thing perfectly and we'll be okay. Instead of just doing the repetition, taking that leap of faith and keep jumping. You know, I think about that all the time in my own world this is episode number 21. We've passed 20. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but 90% of podcasts stop before their 20th episode. So we are already in the top 10% just by making it to episode 21 right here because we just started. I'm sure if you go back to episode number one and listen to me, it's not half as good or it's not as intelligent or we have a good thought process coming out of us as we are today. But we just started moving forward. We just started the repetition. Now, you guys have all heard that saying, practice makes perfect. That's not necessarily true. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes repetition. But if you add just one little tiny ingredient into practice makes repetition to practice makes perfect, and that one little ingredient is learning. If you're learning every single time you practice, if you're evolving every single time you practice, then you will create perfection and you will get better and better and better. Now, two things have to happen. Number one, you got to start. You just Go, start, start doing it. I will tell you, I was super nervous on the first podcast that we did. I didn't know really what I was getting into, what I was doing, but I knew that we had a good message. We needed to get our voice out there. And so we said, okay, let's start this. I was super nervous. You guys don't know this, but episode one that you guys listened to is really podcast number 11 for me. Because the first 10 were so bad, I wouldn't even share them with you. But that's the truth. But we started. We just started moving forward. So I have a new same. And you evolve through repetition. And that's really what that guy on the social media was trying to say with the clay pots. If you just start going and start moving forward, you're gonna find new and exciting ways to do it. You're gonna evolve and you're gonna evolve through repetition. So I started thinking about that in all of my different, all of my different daily lives. Every little, every little task that I do, what am I doing that's repetition that I 
should be doing over and over and over again, but really I'm just trying to make one perfect clay pot. So I started very basic, brushing my teeth. You brush your teeth all the time, it becomes such repetition that you don't even think about what you're doing because you've done it so much. But do you have any cavities? If you don't have any cavities, you're doing it correctly. If you have cavities, well, you need to evolve a little bit and get better. So then after that, I said, okay, now I'm taking a shower. How, how can I take a shower better? Basic stuff. This is beyond basic stuff that I was going through. Okay, when I make breakfast, how can I make it faster and evolve and make it better without putting any stress? Okay, when I go to work, uh, maybe I'm going to plug in how to get to work even though I've driven it a thousand times. Is there a better way? Is there a faster way that I wasn't thinking about? When I get down and sit down at my desk, do, have you guys made an itinerary of what you guys plan to accomplish that day? Or are you guys letting the day just take you for a ride? For me, I started making a list. This started, I want to say six months ago is when I started making lists of the things, that, the action items I want to attack and accomplish each day. So when I woke up, I had a plan of attack. I didn't let the day just take me on. And so I, as long as I make one, two, or three conclusions, or I'm sorry, uh, problems that I've solved, I feel accomplished. And then uh, I evolved into block time management. So from eight to nine, I do my emails. From nine to 10, I have my meetings. From 10 to 11, I uh, walk around and talk to my team and see what's going on. And I started doing blockchain to condense how much efficiency was my time. I was evolving through repetition. And I will tell you the first time I did a blockchain and you have your little piece of paper and you got a little block and you go from eight to nine is this and from nine to 10 is this. From eight to nine, the first time I did it, I will tell you that I got squirreled on my phone. I went to go look for text messages and ended up answering some other text messages. Then I sat down on my computer and saw an email pop up. I'm like, oh, I've been waiting for that email. So I started typing. And then I started doing things. And next thing I know, it was nine o'clock and I hadn't even accomplished this thing. And I had put an hour aside to accomplish a five minute project. And I still didn't do it. So did I, was I successful on day one of blockchain? Of course not. I failed miserably. But through repetition, I evolved and realized that I need to focus, stay on point, and stay where we needed to be. So it and goes right back to the software that we've been creating with SquareCoil. How am I evolving this software to become better and better and better? When I started it 12 years ago, I made it to run very efficiently with the culture of my father's company, Integrated Science. Neither, I never even thought about having different cultures. And I was very naive of me, but it's true. I never thought of all the different cultures that come in different sign companies. I assumed if you're a sign company, you had the same culture. You take care of the customer, you build a quality product, you put it on the truck, and away it goes and it gets installed. Never did I think that the sales guys would also be the project managers and the estimators. Never did I think that the installers would be in charge of the surveys and getting it back to the design team. I never thought of all the different ways that you can create a culture inside of a company and how many different people could talk in different ways. So as we, have, we launched the software out to everybody, they go, well, this doesn't work for me because of X, Y, Z. I had two choices. I can say, oh, this is the best of what it is and move on. Or I can say, oh, my software needs to evolve. I need to change it. And the more companies that I bring on board, the more repetition I have, the more we can find a perfect culture that is, that's going to flow through and be the most efficient. So we just had a um, customer today ask us, they emailed us and said, hey, it's been like two months, our upgrade hasn't happened yet, what's going on, did you forget about us? Mm -hmm. And I politely had to send them an email back and say, no, you're still in queue and it's gonna be another two or three weeks before we get to your request. We have a three month backlog of all these new ideas coming through. And through the repetition of that, I'd say the first five years, I had a yellow pad of paper. I literally had you know, a yellow pad like this with all these notes written on it of all these ideas that people had. Now we've built a whole entire ERP software system just to run SquareCoil. And it has all these new enhancements written in there. And the enhancements, a guy can now move them to the top, move them down below, depending on how important they are, and make sure that we catch every single idea that all of our customers bring to us. Evolving through repetition. So it's that, that thought process of that clay pot really kind of blew my mind because they eloquently put it into words what it takes to do it over and over again, keep moving forward, and then at some point in time, you're going to evolve and find a better way. You know, I, I, it just, it's in every part of our lives. You guys work out? You guys do one rep and put the weight down, said that was the perfect rep and you, I just walk away? 
or you do 10 to 15 reps and you do multiple sets. You're already doing repetition. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger talked about in his movie, um, you know, Pumping Iron, he flat out ass said, people sit in the gym and all they do is just lift. And they're just, their mind somewhere else and they're lifting, they're going through the motions. He goes, for me, I got inside that muscle and said, okay, this muscle's constricting. It's, it's, it's doing exactly what I wanted to do. And I'm thinking long and hard about what I'm doing. He's focusing and learning and evolving on how his repetitions are going to help him. And I hate to say it, but he's one of the biggest men in the world, you know, back in the day he was. I work out all the time. I'm not nearly his size because I didn't evolve in my workouts. I just do the repetition. So now even for me, just a simple ass that I do every single morning, I go out and work out. I'm even learning again. I mean, I'm 44 years old and I'm still learning how to work out. I've been working out since I'm 19. We're still evolving. The next thought I had after that, after for the last two days thinking about this, is there a such thing as perfection? And I'm going to say the answer is no. The answer is no. There's no such thing as perfection at the end of the day. And the reason why I say that is because I think there's always a way to be a little bit better. There's always a way to evolve a little bit more. And I think with our society changing as dynamically as it is, what was perfect yesterday is not going to be perfect today. So I think as you're evolving, as you're changing how your, your day-to-day life goes from the simplest things of brushing your teeth all the way to the big things of running your company, running your organization, or setting up your household, you know, living trusts, all of that stuff, you're going to always have to evolve based on the dynamics of the society. It's an interesting thought process. You know, I've been, I've been mulling around in my head so much, and I just think one of the neatest things is, is, is to evolve for where you're learning. Um, so for this one, I'm going to say, keep moving forward, keep driving forward. And, uh, who knows when you're going to hit that perfect time. When you do celebrate it, enjoy it, love it. And tomorrow you're going to have to evolve again. (laughs) 